So we have seen ways to do forecasting for stationary processes, ones that have just a, a nice flat kind of uh, look to them, where there, there is some noise about the signal, but the signal is relatively flat or horizontal. And then we talked about using uh, different flavors of exponential smoothing to capture if we have a trend, a linear trend, or a, um, some seasonality to it. So we can also use regression to do forecasting as well. So the stuff we learned in the last unit, unit three, we can use to do time series forecasting. So if we believe that the time series has a linear trend or seasonality or both, we can use multiple linear regression to do the forecasting. So to capture the trend, what we need is a time period index. And we use that as one of our x variables, one of the explanatory variables. For the seasons, we would need to create s minus 1 dummy variables for s seasons. So we did before, from unit 3, k minus 1, k was phonetic for categories. So here we'd have, uh, if we had quarterly data, we might look at each quarter as its own season. So we'd have three dummy variables. If we had daily data, then we might want to look at each day as its own season. So we'd have six dummy variables, 7 minus 1. If we had hourly data, we might have 23 dummy variables. So we can use multiple regression to do some forecasting. So let's look at some data. So this is some tourist data from Australia, and we'll open it up in just a second. Uh, so we're given the data in this for format where we have over here the years, and then in each we have four columns for quarters. So this is the first 1999 quarter one is the first year that we have data first quarter we have data and then quarter two and these are in um, obviously this is not just a number of people right this is number of overnight stays uh, in in millions uh, so we have um, one two three four and then 12 years of data so we have 48 different data points so in order to do this we need to put each observational variable on its own row so we'd have 1999 repeated four times one for each of the four quarters then 2000 right so we went from the oldest up to the newest on the bottom so we'll have 48 rows of data and then we would want to um, probably include a time period index and then uh, go from there. So let's let's download the data and start to look at it a little bit. So on Blackboard under Materials Unit 4 we have Tourist. So if I download that and open it up this is what we have. All right. So we need to rearrange. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a new worksheet and then come over here and I want to do I'm gonna do year and this is uh, overnights and millions and then uh, probably also want to do insert and this is the quarter if I could spell today right. so we want it to look like the following we want it to be 1999 quarter one uh, 1999 quarter two 1999 quarter 3, 1999, quarter 4, and then move to the year 2000, quarter 1, etc. All right, and then this is what we're trying to predict the overnight in millions. All right, so we need to rearrange the data in that fashion. So I have it this way, so I can copy it, control C, come over here, right click, uh, transpose the data. All right. And then I can do that for each one. So a little bit tedious, but because we were not given the data in the format we needed, 
we need to do this. So now we look at each one of these. And we continue in this fashion the whole way. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to, I'm going to speed this up so that um, you don't have to watch me do this. You get the idea. When, I, when the video starts again, I'll have this filled out the way I kind of want it. Okay, so I have rearranged all the data where I have uh, each record in its own row. I have 48 rows of data. Right? I'm in row 49, but I have one row of a header row. All right, so now the question is, after I rearrange it, what's the next thing that I should do? So obviously, you should want to plot it. So I'm going to select column C, the overnight stays in millions, overnight visitors, um, and insert a scatter with lines, and it will put it up here. So let's move it over here. And again, I don't like the grid lines, they don't add anything for me here. And so now once we have it plotted, what we try to do is, are there any discernible patterns? So on this, the first thing you should ask yourself, what is the x-axis, what's the y-axis? The y-axis is the C, right? What's in column C, the overnight in millions. So what's the x-axis? It's the time period index, right? So in this case, it used the row, right? So this is the first row, second row, third row, dot, 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 which is the time period index, which is what we want to look at. So here we, we're looking for patterns. If we look for a stationary pattern, uh, that would be something that would be flat and horizontal. Um, does this have a stationary pattern to it? Uh, to me, it does not look like it. It looks to me like there are two things going on. It looks like there's an upward linear trend. Uh, it looks linear to me. And there looks like there's some kind of seasonality where this one looks to be the highest, this one looks to be the lowest. All right? These two are kind of in the middle. All right? So it looks like we could use or try to tease out of this the... Um, linear trend and also it looks like quarterly seasonality since we have quarterly data so we'll try to do that next